Hello everyone and welcome to another of these recorded videos as part of the Tech Bite Prevention Week and you're on the What Makes Virus Tech Project page. My name is Sam Langford and I am the Public Engagement Project Manager for the What Makes Virus Tech Project, a citizen science-based project coming out of the MRC University of Glasgow's Centre for Virus Research. Um, over this week, we've been showcasing partners that we've got involved in the project, different ways to look out for ticks and keep yourselves protected, as well as meeting some of the researchers at the Centre for Virus Research in the Brennan Lab. Now, today, we're going to meet another one of these partners. I'm going to get them straight in to say hello from NHS Highland. It's Francis Hines. Hello, how are you doing? Hi, Sam. I'm doing very well. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Could you tell everybody watching at home who you are and what you do? Okay, so I'm the Research Development and Innovation Manager for NHS Highland. So uh, basically what that means is any uh, research activity, any innovation and any sort of service redesign or evaluation or service change uh, is likely to come through my division. Uh, it seems like quite a big job, um, quite a lot <laughs> going on, I imagine a very, very busy person. So thank you so much for being here to, to have a chat with us today. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about was um, an app that's been developed by NHS Highland focused on Lyme disease. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's not just us that are developing Lime App, um, which is a suite of products. Uh, part, part of it is an app, part of it is a sort of web landing page that you can use. Um, so it's uh, NHS Highland um, alongside the Scottish Rural College, SRUC, which also has a, a centre up here in Inverness. Um, with a company rolled out from Oxford University and a company based in Belgium. So together we've actually been working on this project now for about five or six years um, and we're nearly ready to launch the free version of the app um, and it again is citizen science based in that it's an app that provides prevention um, information which has been uh, reviewed by the NHS uh, and therefore you know we hope it's the best quality um, information that it can be and has lots of links with it but also has the functionality of being able to report a tick when you're out in the field and by the use of uh, satellite technology you can actually work out where that tick was sighted so over time um, all of that data will build up into having a very highly functional, um, if you like, risk mapping type uh, product that can be integrated with other databases and other products. Um, and we are developing a commercial uh, version for the use of big companies with occupational health departments whose uh, employees might go out into the field and again encounter ticks. So it's designed to be a large scale, regional, national and international wide, um, if you like, increasingly effective database uh, coordinating ticks animal sightings, NHS, health data, uh, which is all confidential, obviously, um, and citizen science data with what's happening with data from satellites to bring it into really a, a massive set of information that will be useful for the management of Lyme. Well, that sounds like a really, like, clearly five or six years is a long time to be working on these things. It sounds like a really big job, but a really important thing to be very close to rolling out. Do we know when it's going to be like the free versions rolling? Or uh, that, the no? free version is due in the next few weeks. Um, I should also say that this is largely funded by European Space Agency money uh, because of the involvement of satellites. Um, uh, so from the NHS's viewpoint, um, it's a, a very good activity be, to be involved in 
because not only does it help us work on, you know, prevention of Lyme disease, but it also helps us to support people in changing their behaviour when they're going out into the countryside, um, because we're providing them with information about how they can best protect themselves and what to do if they get a, a bite. But yeah, it is a, a large scale activity. <laughs> Yeah, with some really interesting partners involved there, like mm. NHS, you've got SRUC, and then you've just thrown in European Space Agency as well. And it's like some quite different um, organisations coming together mm. to mm -hmm. to make this happen, which is really exciting. And you mentioned mapping and kind of reporting of kind of uh, tick sightings that people may have, which brings me back to the What Makes Viruses Tick project um, that we're working on, which is looking at something very, very similar. So how how do you see the potential for your project and our project to work together over the next two and a half years yeah. that you're running? Well, it's like a lot of uh, tick projects, uh, well, specifically with us at the moment, Lyme disease. Um, I mean, it is Lyme disease and zoonotic diseases are one of our innovation cluster areas in NHS Highland, partly because of the prevalence of Lyme, uh, but partly because of climate change. We know it's getting worse, if you like, in terms of that and the other diseases are coming along. So, you know, with a true NHS view of everything, I think, Anything that we do that we can work with other groups where products or outcomes or data can be integrated, obviously, you know, in a safe information governance approved way, um, then the better. You know, we're talking to people at Liverpool University. Um, we are thinking about setting up potentially a UK biobank for Lyme disease samples in Highland. Um, in, in Highland, we also have the Scottish National Lyme Testing Laboratory. Um, so we're doing an awful lot. And I think as far as the what makes ticks probably, uh, what makes, what makes, <laughs> what makes viruses tick? Is, is, what it, makes it, it viruses tick? <laughs> it does roll off the tongue, but only eventually <laughs> is concerned. Um, then, you know, I think it's part of a bigger picture. And uh, we're always keen to work with everybody who's doing stuff, because the more data you put into this kind of activity, the better the outcomes and the better it is for patients and the general public. 100%. And what is what we'll be kind of moving forward with in our, our public engagement activities is looking at the collaboration that we can bring, whether that is with uh, groups like yourselves um, or whether it is with affected communities um, in rural areas and perhaps more so in urban areas as well. Um, so having that collaboration is absolutely key and that's exactly how I see us working with you folks over the coming years as well, just to, to link up with so many amazing teams and projects not yeah. just in Scotland, but across the UK, which is really exciting. Yeah. I mean, I was always interested to work with uh, Benjamin Brennan um, and his team on what he's doing. Because in my um, sort of vision, I see the whole Lyme disease tick thing in a bit of a like cradle to grave approach. So it's interesting to work with people who are looking at the sort of lab end of it and the the animal testing and the virus testing right through to you know people who are treating Lyme disease um, and working out the best drugs to use with Lyme disease so it's having that sort of end-to-end -end kind of vision um, and anything we can do that works anywhere along that is is a positive thing as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. Um, for for the name drop we just had of Ben Ben Brennan, for those who maybe haven't seen the previous videos in the week, Ben is the group leader of the Brennan Lab at the Centre for Virus Research in Glasgow. Um, you can find out a little bit more specifically about what the Brennan Lab does. If you scroll back through and see that content that came out earlier this week, um, he'll tell you what he, he and other uh, PhD uh, researchers and postdoctoral researchers are, are working on just now as well. 
Um, but you just mentioned there about thinking about the 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 lab the the lab work and the the viruses that we're finding. Um, Lyme not being a virus um, is a little bit different. Yeah. So that 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 kind of brings me on to the next question, which would be about um, Lyme apps, very specifically focusing on on Lyme. But are there plans for potentially other apps looking at other types of pathogens, perhaps like viruses that are spread by ticks? Maybe um, the whole idea of uh, Lyme apps sort of came to a point when we decided. Um, as a group of partners to create a company which is called ID Maps. Um, and LIMAP is really building a platform way of doing things so that if we look at other uh, tick related or zoonotic related uh, health implications, whether for humans or for animals, um, we can use the same platform for those. So, for example, we've discussed about the Zika virus. We've looked at uh, the possibility of doing a uh, liver fluke in cattle. Um, you know, the, in a way, you can just download a list of, of viruses and things and go, is somebody doing something with that already? How good is it? Can we add to that? Or, oh, nobody's doing something on this. Is this going to be a problem now or in, say, five or ten years' time? If that's the case, should we start to look at that as something else we include um, and build on this platform so that we can always provide uh patients or the general public or just people with uh, interest scientifically or otherwise with a group of resources that may include some kind of risk mapping, uh, that may include some kind of NHS sort of reviewed data or information, um, may include satellite imagery or satellite use or, or whatever. It's the basic function should be applicable to lots of different things and obviously as we do that kind of thing we get different partners involved awesome well it sounds like you're endlessly busy with like lots of um <laughs> projects and ideas is there are there any other you know, line based projects that you wanted to to mention today just yeah for... so yeah so if, although our cluster is about zoonotic diseases um, which I'm sure everybody listening to this knows it is sort of animals to people um, related diseases. Lyme is probably our main focus. So at the moment, we're clearly doing Lyme Map, but we're also doing a project which is funded through the European Union, um, which is called North Tick. And that is uh, various places in Scotland with uh, Scandinavian and Northern Europe countries. And essentially, that's also looking at generating some uh, awareness raising information sources, but is also looking at improving um, the sensitivity and efficiency of assays that get used for um, testing people. Um, when they think they've got Lyme, because one of the problems with Lyme is that uh, it is very difficult sometimes to detect, and it's very important that these assays are improved. So that's one that we're working with in quite a big way. Um, and then we've also been recently working with Pfizer, the pharmaceutical company, who have actually developed um, a vaccine against Lyme disease. Um, but what they have found is that the data relating to Lyme disease in many countries, including the UK, is actually quite poor in terms of incidence and prevalence. So they have funded us as an educational grant to work with GPs We've just finished the first stage, uh, GPs in Highland, 15 of them, um, by putting in an intervention into the GP record so that they improve their recording of their diagnosis. Um, and we're about to roll it out to another 15 practices in Scotland and 10 practices in England. Um, and they're very um, keen on this. Um, 
and have been pleased with what we've come up with for the first uh, report. Um, but we're carrying on now with it in a wider way to see if, you know, supporting GPs in diagnosis will actually help the quality of incidence data, which will allow Pfizer to work out whether it's um, viable really to put the vaccine in a country or not. And they're potentially looking at, you know, doing it wider than the UK eventually. Plus, we're doing oh. a, a few other little Lyme things. Um, just a few, just a few. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> oh no, that like anything that can be done to improve detection and diagnostic is just so important for something like this. Because it is before working on this project, is all that I knew was that it was really quite hard for people to find the diagnosis for Lyme, and that they'll go through quite a lot of other things before they they pinpoint it as that. So anything at all that we can do to to make that easier for folks, um, the better. It's it's a nasty disease um, in its sort of um, chronic stages, I suppose, although there's a lot of debate about whether Lyme has a chronic stage or not. Uh, there have been various estimates around, but people with sort of serious long-term Lyme disease and, and its implications um, on many of the organs in the body means that, you know, the NHS does find it difficult to treat patients uh, because so many things might come out of Lyme, so many different symptoms and and impacts uh, and so on. Um, but there has been one estimate of a cost, um, and I need I would need to go back and check it because it's quite old now, that it might uh, cost, say, around £46,000 per patient per year to, to support somebody who's got, you know, serious Lyme. So it's not a cheap um, thing, you know. It's not something that the NHS can take lightly. No, no, well, that's not an insignificant cost at all. But it does again just highlight the importance and like the great benefit of us having the National Health Service in the in the UK c that can help us to support those people. Um, mm -hmm. So um, we're almost in twenty minutes. We could sit here and talk all day, but. Thank you Sorry. so much for no, not at all, not at all. Don't apologize. Thank you so much for coming to chat with us and tell us about the amazing work that you're doing. Um, we'll That's probably post cool. some links to anything below this video so that people can find out more about what's going on. But otherwise, Francis, thank you so much for coming to coming to chat. No, that's fine, and I'm always happy to answer anybody's questions about what we're doing up in Highland uh, in terms of uh, Lyme disease or anything else, frankly. <laughs> Oh. Um, before we sign off, I just want to double check. What's the weather like in Inverness? It's really nice here. Beautiful. In Glasgow, isn't it? It's yeah, good. beautiful. Yeah, really Fantastic. lovely. Well, <laughs> um, hopefully you can get to enjoy some of that sunshine. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for folks who have been watching as well. Um, please do drop any questions you have below and we'll do our very best to get back to you. But otherwise, thank you. Take care and we'll see you all very soon.